Pesos, if you're watching, we clearly don't need you, nerd. <laughs> All right. Here we have, down in the bottom right, a defending champion of the GSL. He is... Samsung Khan, Loro. Such a great player. One of the best to switch by far. Mm -hmm. One of the best in the world right now, I think. This man up here. He is a Protoss player that no one really ever expects to do well, but he's doing well. He is... Ungjin Staju, flying. Flying is kind of like the, the wild card in Kodas, even from the round of 32 on. You never know what he's going to do, and he's going to surprise you. He's going to take wins with crazy aggressive strategies mm -hmm. a lot of the time. You know, that was a really good choice, that strategy. That's that's going to be strong against the early double Evo Zerglings because you're going to get your plus one up a lot quicker than they're going to have their plus one armor up, and that's what really matters. Yeah. When they're really dependent upon the Zerglings, they either need to catch those pylons while they're further away, not let them get in so close, or get a ton of spines up to start. Yeah, and, and it, it was such yeah. a great choice for cross spawns because he knew that Roar would not be able to scout until the last second. He also caught that Overlord. He put his gateways at the top left of his base so that he knew the Overlord that would come around the top right would never have a chance of seeing them in time. Yeah, I, I have to say, everything about the way he's planned this, uh, in the first match at least, was pretty phenomenal. And here we see him once again going for that really quick Nexus first, really abusing the current metagame, to be honest. There's yeah. a lot of gateway expands and thus... Uh, you know, no one's really going as many early pools right now. So this is this is a really solid opening from Flying. Yeah, I like his choice here. He goes forge in the main once again as well, so his wall is going to be a little bit late, but that's that's really, really smart. And yeah. also against an early pool, having the forge in the main can oftentimes help you a lot because you can get your can up for safe. It's yeah. sometimes even save your forge, very rarely, but occasionally. You know, you really, with a forge in main fast expansion, you're really only afraid of like the 10 to 12 pool range. Anything later, you're going to be able to get your wall in. Anything earlier, you were going to have to cancel your nexus anyways. So, I mean, it's, it's just completely solid by him. So he's got a very nice opening here. I would say as far as builders go, he is the high end in the, the very early game here. Yeah, definitely gets an advantage just simply because his nexus is going to be up first. And he's going to be able to comfortably tech behind this as well. Roro now going down just to make sure his hatchery is not being cannoned. And we'll check to see if he can find that probe. Yep. Uh, which in this case, flying is not sent all the way down. Mm. Now, we'll have to see in just a moment. Is he taking that third base. It looks like yes he is. So not choosing this map for that same strategy that he used on Red City. I think that that might even be a good choice because flying with his type of style it's going to be harder. You know that that Zergling heavy style is kind of like a meta-ish type build to fight against the current Yeah, Protoss it goes styles. against the grind of, of the Stargate builds that we've been seeing come mm -hmm. out left and right. And it also can do quite well against robotics type openers, which we don't see all too often. But if you have enough lings, you can stop any sort of sentry drops. You can stop yeah. the immortal push as long as you see it coming. So, you know, it's I like that he's going back to a more standard style to try to deal with whatever wonky strategy is going to yeah. come out of flying here. He's saying here, you know, I tried to do kind of a bit of a meta e style, going for those links and the double mm -hmm. evo chambers in game one, but I think I can beat you in a straight-up game yeah. in game two, so I'm just going to play a straight-up style here. And, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a cool choice as well, because the, the standard play is a standard play for a reason. Overall, all things accounted, it's the strongest way to play. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, flying with his weird style will have more experience against standard play than you're going to have against his. But if you really play it, you know, close to the belt, you know, I don't know if that's the right expression. Don't cut too but many corners. Yeah, yeah. Not too many corners cut or anything like that. You should be good. You know, you eat your crust and everything's fine. Eat your crust. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Eat your crust and everything's I'm fine. In, I'm in kind of some shock here. That's kind of a brilliant... A brilliant way to put it, Wolf. I was You're watching. kind of like a poet and a philosopher, aren't you? <laughs> kind of, yeah. I was watching some uh, old Bill Nye videos and got inspired. <laughs> Does he say something about eating your crust? There's one episode where he talks about the Earth's crust, and, and there's some little short videos describing like somebody not eating their crust. and It's really complicated, but you can look it up on YouTube. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Wolf. I'll definitely do that later. That's what I'm doing. I'm just telling you, like, I'm, I don't have any sort of crazy genius here. I just happened <laughs> to be watching Bill Nine. It seemed appropriate. He's mm. going to catch this Overlord right away. Yep. And notice he's getting plus one and sending Phoenixes out immediately. This means that we're going to see Phoenixes try to supply block and force a lot of, uh, you know, extra Overlords to be made. And he's going to try to hit with plus one Zelots right yep. behind it. 
and especially if he sees that there's no Roach Warren. Um, this is a kind of a build we saw him use against Stefano, yes. actually. Yes. He, on this very map. It is very flying-esque. This is the type of build he likes. There's a lot of aggression in it, a lot of harassment, and if your opponent doesn't react perfectly, this can do critical damage. Yeah. And that's the type of build that Flying actually, that's his bread and butter, man. That's what he's made his career off of. Exactly. He's still supply blocked here. He wants to make those roaches, but he can't until the overload's ready. They're about to pop here, and then he will start some roaches to be safe. He starts plus one as well for those roaches. And the pylon is ready, oh, but the plus one is not quite. He just started seven drones, and that is actually going to be a bit of an issue because he has, what units does he have out? He has two Zerglings. How well are those going to do against four Phoenixes and four plus one Zealots? Well, I think they're going to do quite poorly. We're going to watch it happen. The Stalker is starting to do some damage to the hatch. He's going to want to target down that Queen first. He's going to pick it up, in fact, with the Phoenixes. Oh, he's got to be careful. There is a Spore in there. This is a nice, confusing AI movement here from Roro, but really he has nothing to fight with yeah. here, and four more Zergling, uh, four more Zealots on the way are going to make all these Zerglings really uh, worthless. Yeah, and then he pops the Roaches out actually in the worst possible place. The Zealots get an automatic surround. There's only a few Roaches, so yeah, if he kites against a small number of Zealots, that works, but against this many, it's just not enough. Mm. And this is a really nice attack so far here. The Spore does get up behind the Hatchery, which is really nice. It's going to help him out against yeah, the Yeah, he needs to pull the Phoenix back. That was so close. There he Ooh. goes at the very last second, gets it back. More and more plus one Zods coming in. This is forcing a lot more Roaches. Even if this attack doesn't kill the Hatchery, he's done a lot of damage so far. I love how he just picks up the Roaches because he knows the Zealots can fight the Lynx cost efficiently in between the mineral patches like this for days on end. If he can eliminate the Roach DPS, even if he doesn't kill the Roach very quickly, really keeps the Zealots active. Yeah. And behind this, in fact, he's already making Immortals to help plow through these Roaches. A ton of workers already killed up at 17. Yeah. This is going just swimmingly for flying. This is exactly how you want the strategy to go. You want your opponent to skip the Roaches, and you get in here with that first wave of Zealots. Then, when he's starting to, to have a low number of Larva left, he wants to make the Roaches. He has already spent his Larva on Drones and the Overlords, and he's just done a ton of damage here. Yeah. Well... Uh, you know, this this was, I have to say, very, very good for flying overall. And in fact, you know what? He's going into a second immortal, two more gates, and a robotic space. So I think what we're going to see here is, well, actually he's walling off, so I guess he is going to take a third base. He could be faking, though. Hmm. He hasn't started the Nexus. He shows the probe here. That's kind of a funny place to walk if you're going to fake. Um, because what I was thinking was he might be going for that two Immortal, two Colossus all in off two yep. base, which is so popular in Korea right now. Uh, but we'll have to see. I mean, he might still do it. He is flying. He did get supply blocked here quite significantly. There's the, the Nexus. This does start it at his third base. And there's no scout over there right now, so mm. he's going to have to pressure a little bit with these Roaches to get some information. Meanwhile, the Phoenix is still killing Overlords. He's been in the red for a really long time. Yeah. A lot of Lings on the way. Seven Overlords as well. A uh, very annoying place here for Roro, and really, he can't do any attacks right now that'll do anything. Exactly. To be this, honest. this Roach pressure is just really more of a scout than anything else. Yeah. He knows he can't actually commit to to fighting against this army. Great Phoenix hallucination here. He's trying to find that Roach army. It looks like he just barely misses it, though. Here come the Roaches. And look at that, targeting down a little bit here. Pretty well done. Uh, I don't know that he's going to actually get a cancel on, but oh Beautiful my God, warp that was. That was just sexy. That was amazing. He catches the roaches, then four seals, and once the sentries get into range, kills these roaches for free. The roaches spinning around in circles like they're trying to do an old 70s dance. <laughs> but in fact, there is... <laughs> well, those dances aren't popular anymore no. in the 21st century. I didn't even know where to go with that. It was so good, Wolf. Good, and good job. I, I feel like at this moment in time, Roro is getting a little bit desperate. He gets Hydra's speed. He's getting a few Hydras out, and he's going to try to hit a timing where he can knock that third Nexus down, but he's already facing yeah. Colossus. I mean, when your first Hydras are coming out, when your opponent's already got Thermal Lance already done, yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah, he's in more than just trouble, but you're right, Wolf. He is all in. He is actually still down at 48 drones against a three-base Protoss that is almost up to 60 probes now, so he has to get something done. He has to get done now. He will break through this wall, but you know, only with a few Zerglings. By the way, I'm mildly... No Mothership Core? Surprised. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. I'm like, there's actually no Mothership Core at all. Yeah, you and I are thinking the same thing. I'm like, well, if you had a Mothership Core, it'd be even easier to hold this yeah. pressure. I was just looking. I'm like, all right, how much energy is... Oh, wait, he doesn't have one, and he's had a big enough bank forever. He looks like he just forgot. Yeah. This it, actually happens sometimes still. Exactly. Sometimes every now and then you see a player just 
He's focused so much on his Colossus production, he just happens to forget it. Needs to make sure he fights this on top of the ramp, not yes. down there. And he's got plenty of force skills to dice this up, you know, three ways from Sunday. This is not going to go well for Roro. And in fact, he's just continuing to produce Roach's Lings, getting that Hydra range out. Well, he, oh, he's not going to get anything done, man. He doesn't have any vision of where the Hydras are approaching, so he's not going to get the better start of the engagement, but he should be able to move over there now. You know, he actually has, like, an observer out in front of the other ramp, so he should just be standing in a, a good zoning area. Exactly. He will deny these roaches that are going to open a wall. Just barely there. He can restart the wall, though. He catches two of the roaches here, and... The more time that goes by, the worse things are for Roro. He's really just not yeah. able to hit it here. He's about to be facing plus one armor. Blink is nearly done. Mm -hmm. I think his best chance at this point, because he hasn't even tried to... Oh, God, this is not his best chance right here. No, absolutely this is, not. This is how you lose a lot of units. GG. He okay, doesn't even so, fight it out. So, wait a minute. Did flying just 2-0 Roro? Yes. Okay. Well, um, the first game, I got to say, flying uh, chose a really great strat. It did very well against what Roro had chosen. Second game, though, I do have a problem with the way Roro played. Now, I am a Roro fan. I love that guy. I think he's one of the best Zergs in the world. But if your Overlord is not about to scout the Stargate and the Phoenix, the first Phoenix comes out, you have to prepare as if it's the plus one Phoenix push. Yeah, because, because he doesn't... that's what it is. Yeah, and he doesn't know, so he has to play safer, especially yeah. when you're down a game in a series like this. I feel you need to make just a few roaches at the start, or at least wait a second until you can find that pylon. Go send the links you do have out to find the pylon, because if you don't have the roaches in time, especially when you're spending all your lore effort because you're supply blocked on overlords, we just saw what happens. No, you lose a bunch of drones, and Phoenix has picked up the only few roaches you can make at a time. This this is a problem that we've seen in Zerg sometimes, because this build does get mixed in a little bit still. And, I mean, seriously, if you see one of the first Phoenixes come out, it's either because your Overlord's about to spot, spot the Stargate, yeah. in which case you're still going to spot it, because that's how close you are, because that's why the Phoenix came. Or he's putting on, like, super pressure early and needs to start killing Overlord. So, uh, hopefully Roro can play better coming up. Yeah, but a bit shaky there. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and jump to a quick little commercial break and then come back and do our next match. Stay tuned.